Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams, an eclectic mix of sarcasm, innuendos and my ever non-finishing quest to find the finest hairdressers around. And if you are into that, all that sort of stuff, remember to check me out on Patreon where you can get some discounts on Hambini.com as well. Now, without further faffing around, let's talk about the topic of today, which is one that I'm too late to the party. I enjoy things of a fine vintage, like Liz Hurley. Anyway, today we have a classified hub, everything GCN and the usual shields didn't tell you, by Hambini, aged five. Let us check to see if that pen is working. Oh, I think they're gonna be on the end of a reaming today. Right, let's start off with the disclaimer. So the usual one, which is I've lifted these pictures from various places. If you want some credit, then use the box below and then or send me an email and I'll give you the credit. The other thing is I did ask Classified if I could have a sample hub for review. They probably thought that I would take it apart and decided to ignore me, but that's their loss. Here's an overview of Classified's website. This is the Classified website and if you're not familiar with what all this is about, normally on bikes of the, you know modern contemporary bikes, you usually have two chain rings, so the things that your pedals, uh, crank axles are attached to. This does away with that and puts that gearing inside the back hub. So you've only got one chain ring and multiple uh, sprockets and then a transfer box in between. I will explain how that works in a minute. This is um, all the funding they've got. So they've got some fairly high profile people that are into classified stuff. And they are um, you know, here below. Anna van der Breggen, Marcel Kittel, Tom Boonen, and Andre Greipel. He lives near Cologne, I believe. Anyway, this is where they've been featured and their stuff is now you know, fully available. I've seen it in some bike shops. So when you get the kit, what you get is, um, all of this stuff. Now for starters, it's about 900 quid. Uh, there's a control unit, which is this one. I think this is the transmitter, could be wrong. And then you've got the power shift hub and the hub hub. So this bit attaches to the spokes, this bit attaches to the cassette and this bit. And this is your through axle here. And this bit we will come on to in a minute. So the mechanics of how this works. This is what is known as an epicyclic gear train. And I've taken this picture from wherever it is. The, you know, normally the chain would come along here, you wrap around and then go off back to where it is. In here, we've now got some gearing, a bit like Sturmy Archer back in the day. And the method that this uses is to lock one of the rings. So you can either have the whole thing locked, in which case it behaves like a 1x transmission or um, a step down ratio which is in there and it's like 0.7. This is your basic epicyclic transmission and there are the four combinations of what's going on. Uh, just to talk you through the parts first of all, this red thing on the outside is called the outer ring, the orange thing on the inside in which case in picture number one this is rotating uh, clockwise is called the inner ring um, or inner gear. Um, and then you've got also, well, some people call them sun and planet gears, but uh, you can see why, because the sun is the orange gear and then the blue are the, the planets. Um, the power can be taken off in three places. You can either take the power off the red ring, off the green thing, which links all the planetary gears up, and that's called the cage, or the inner ring, the sun gear. There are four combinations of power you know, takeoff. Um, if we're to talk about number four first, so number four is where the whole thing is locked and that would behave like what you've got now. So a big ring locks up the rear hub and you've got that. Number three, this gear system doesn't have, but it's on here just for, for clarity. It's not this setup because if you look at number three, the red gear is rotating um, counterclockwise and the sun gear is rotating clockwise, um, so they're opposites. You'd be going backwards, so it's not that. That leaves us with one and two. Now, I think, I should stress, I think that in the low gear on the classified hub, the center is locked. Power is taken off the, um, the planetary gear, so off the green cage. Um, I don't think it's number one. Um, the reason is because the sun gear is rotating. So that's what I think. So we've got number two and number four. Again, I could be wrong, 
but you know that's by the by now if you do look at number two the outer gear which let's say is your normal 1x transmission um, is a step down towards the green so the green is not traveling anywhere near as fast as the red and that's your 0.7 I just want to highlight a few things that probably a lot of people haven't mentioned if you this this does not seem to be able to fit um, anything with a, a QR quick release type hub um, partly because the transmitter and I guess the electronics are housed in the through axle the other thing is and I've highlighted it in orange here is some frames require a counter torque or counter torque adapter to be screwed onto it and that actually goes onto the back of your brake mount so that could end up making the brake mount a bit of a fiddle to install you might not even have clearance for it depending on you know what, what you've got um, and th this is a schematic of what you've got so the transmission module is in this case on the bar end um, so where the, the plug goes I think it's a bit of an awkward place to put it I think that'll be one of the drawbacks you need to have the integration into the handlebars uh, and the transmitter which uh, sorry the transmission receiver which does ANT plus and Bluetooth is in the end of the through axle right as far as manufacturing goes these teeth look to be I think bronze it could be brass it's difficult to tell just in case of the, the picture um, the you know the contrast and the and saturation all that crap I don't think they are on bearing so I think they're on pins which are those things there I mean this is quite a complicated setup whoever's designed this you really got to take your hat off to them to integrate all of that into such a small space but I think this thing here is the the ratchet so the free hub is in there again this is all speculation because I haven't got one uh, the housing looks like it's got straight pull spokes whether you can get different ones or not I mean they have got some wheel vendors on board but not many um, I think that'll probably be 7075 or something along those lines anodized you've got the uh, splines for the disc brake rotor there uh, this is the the power hub let's say so this bit attaches to your wheel and this bit's the cassette which actually goes on there and this drives um, through so the speed reduction I think is in there somewhere I think it's a bit built. the speed reductions there this is an exploded view I took this from the uh, classified website I had to put it through Photoshop to actually be able to see anything it was so dark it's a fairly standard setup so you've got the lock ring there and then it screws the cassette on there that cassette is custom uh, and I'll talk you through that in a minute I think the drive from the cassette is actually on these slots here that slides through and then the drive from that assembly to the the wheel hub let's say is through these splines here okay and this bit here I think is where the counter torque is now the counter torque I think is required there because the sun gear ie the the very inner gear on that uh, previous animation was the one that was locked so you need that because otherwise it won't work now some frames apparently have that built in but don't know um, you'll have to go and check for yourself this is the cassette now this could be one of the downfalls of classified because this is not a cheap thing to make this looks to be one piece and it's always been scalloped and machined fairly elaborately now the thing i found in the past is when I've used anything other than a Shimano cassette with a Shimano chain, the shifting's garbage. Uh, I did watch Trace Velo's video where he got a no-name brand from AliExpress and tried the same thing, and he noticed the same thing as well, that shifting was crap. Uh, how that pans out on here, I don't know. I don't know if they've licensed the Hyperglide patents, I doubt it, or if they've just gone for a free-for-all. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the complexity of that is you know, fairly complicated I know SRAM do do one as well but it, it that can't be cheap um, I think the drive goes through here somewhere um, yeah not not so straightforward right this is the bit the money slide really this is a schematic of a 2x drivetrain so on a 2x drivetrain you've got let's say you're in the big ring you pedal here 
power goes through the big ring, through the chain, through the rear cassette, and then through to your wheels. That has an efficiency of around about 97%. Now, if you're in the small ring, you've got the same thing. So pedal, small ring, chain, rear cassette, wheel drive. When you've got the, um, the classified hub, there's a bit of a difference. So in the big ring, and let's say you're in the locked position on the classified hub, you've got again, pedaling, big ring, chain, 97% efficient. And there's your drive to the wheels. Now, when you go and you know click the button and you suddenly drop down to 0.7 of your gear ratio, then this bit is disengaged. And now you've got this, which is the G2, I've used the G terms because um, that's what you use in you know, technical literature. Uh, you've now lost another, you've got 96% efficiency through there and then the wheel drive goes through there. Now, if you do the maths on that, so the classified hub is 97 times 96%. It gives you 93.1 to 97%, whichever, which, you know, the 93.1 is when you've got both bits engaged. So you're on the big ring and then you drop your ratio down. That 97% is basically locked. The 2X drivetrain is pretty much 97% all the time. Now, that, you know, it might not sound that significant, but it's a compound loss. So you've got 97% because that's your unified gear train efficiency, and then you lose another 4% um, because you've got 97% times 96%, and that's what you end up with. Now, if you put that into numbers at 350 watts, which is like me on a really, really good day plowing up a hill, I was going to say plowing something else, but you know what I'm like, uh, that's 350 watts versus 336 watts. That is a big difference. Um, and again, this might be worse due to the chain angle. Now, when I did look on the classified website, they talked about efficiency and all this kind of carry on about lower chain tensions and all that kind of stuff. The only way I can see this actually sort of evening out in efficiency terms is if you were on the small chain ring and a, on a 2x drivetrain and on the small sprocket on the back, that would be something I would never ride in, but that's probably where you, you classified would be about level. The rest of it, you've, <laughs> I, I just don't think it's going to work. Um, but anyway, it'd be interested to know your comments. So there you go. 93% versus 97%. Right, now the comparison, the pros and cons. I tried to be as uh, impartial as I could in this. Um, the pros, you've got no chain rubbing. So that's one problem you do tend to get with uh, front mechs because they're more prone to getting bashed in your car or whatever. Most of the stuff is sealed, but the problem is when you have seals, you do induce friction. And, you know, that's a bad thing in this kind of game. Um, there's no mech set up. I mean, they are well funded. If you look at how much money they've got, it's, it's, you know, people have dumped a load of money into there. I'm not sure. I mean, they're probably a lot cleverer than I am, and they probably know a lot more than me. Uh, there is also the claim that it is more aerodynamic. That's their claim, not mine. I think that's a bit of a dubious one, to be honest, because you've got your foot right in front of the front chain ring and the turbulence coming off your foot. It'll make piddly squat difference if you've got your uh, chain ring on there or not. Uh, sorry, mech on there or not. Now, the cons, I mean, the biggest one I can... Well, the first one I can see is the custom cassette. Uh, that's not going to be cheap. Um, you know, some people may or may not want the, the shifting issue with that. Um, it is, without doubt, heavier and more complicated. You've got all those gears in there, six planetary gears, um, which, which each have um, you know, manufacturing tolerances and stuff like that. The efficiency loss in low gears, and I think that's just a complete you know, turn off. <laughs> if you've got 4% loss in there, now you can go check that in various... Uh, papers and things, but it tends to be about 96-97% uh, efficiency in a, in a planetary or epicyclic gearbox. Um, I mean, the inertia, so, I mean, your, your small chain ring weighs three-tenths of naff all, whereas all of that bronze, brass, uh, complication inside the um, 
epicyclic gearbox that's spinning at high speed is probably going to give you slower acceleration. I imagine it would do if you did the second moment of areas of all of that lot because um, it is an omega squared relationship as well. So, yeah. Um, and this, I think, could be the killer. So at the moment, all I've seen is people with a satellite switch that's buried inside their drop bars or that little switch on the end of the... Um, uh, uh, the, the, the drop bar. I think really it needs to be integrated into the switches. Uh, so your DX, DI2 or the the actual SRAM ETAP into the levers, otherwise it's just, it's not gonna happen. Unproven technology, and if you are gonna do a wheel change, say out in the field, if you're in a race or something, I can imagine this is gonna be a right pain in the backside because the transmission unit needs to come off with the, uh, uh, <laughs> with, with the wheel. Um, and that's it. Now, you know, questions and comments below. I do not think this is going to be a commercial success unless you get adoption by a group set manufacturer. Now, all the wheel makers in China who have a, a, you know, a, an interest in this because they could make it or break it and they could adopt it or not, I think will will decide their fate. My personal feeling is I don't think this is going to take off. Um, and that's mainly because of this, this 4%. I mean, 4% is... Is a crazy number. Four percent is a lot. Um, now they could argue about chain tension, this, that, and the other. I think it's a difficult argument to to actually prove. I mean, all it all they've got on their website is statements. There's no real proof of it, um, and there's no independent literature. Whereas there's plenty of papers that say an epicyclic gearbox is ninety-seven percent efficient, ninety-six percent efficient, something along those lines. That is it. If you did enjoy that presentation, remember to smash that like button. If you didn't, go screw yourself. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser.